physics has always been fun like that for me, and that's why I sometimes injure myself, because I'm probably doing things I shouldn't be doing. I blew up the podium in B16, which is our big lecture hall. So I noticed that on the bench top was sitting a little child's mitten. So I dipped it in the liquid oxygen, I placed it on the podium. When I lit it, the, the thing that I saw for about a second was flame in my whole view of vision, as far as high as I could see and to the sides. All that remained was these little black flecks flying around the room and the podium was on fire. People often ask me about research versus teaching. I don't think there's a difference. I think that, you know, I'm not a researcher, I'm a teacher. And so the best way to, to teach students is just to throw them in a lab and get them working. It's really a very helter-skelter kind of way of learning, but it's the best way to learn. And some of my uh, students become my colleagues. I work with them and then they eventually get excited about the work and then after they graduate we continue to collaborate and the excitement continues. In areas like cancer therapies, where you can design a molecule specifically to stick to a tumor cell. The idea then is that you shine a laser beam to burn the tumor. We designed the molecule by computer. And then uh, a chemist in China made such molecules. They were measured in Belgium by this student who was doing his joint PhD between our two universities. And we found the molecule that was 50% better than the best molecules that had ever been measured before. The phenomena that we're looking at is called the photomechanical effect. And what this means is that light can change the shape of the material, whereas one of these photomechanical units, and we call them MPUs, would control the flow of light the same way that a transistor controls the flow of electricity. The way we envision the smart material is to have these little MPUs built into a fiber, and there would be a string of these MPUs in a single fiber, so that when you shine light into that fiber, it could activate all those MPUs individually. You could imagine uh, that as being a thread that could be built into some bulk material that would have very smart function and would allow you to do things like taking your sofa and turning it into an iPod. I think one of my problems personally is I'm a little bit crazy. And so the ideas that I come up with you know, people think, oh, he's just crazy, and then they, you know, they, they kind of ignore it. But as time goes on, it seems that, it, you know, some of these things eventually catch on. I always liked science since I was a little kid, and I always enjoyed science fiction. I always dreamed about things. You know, I always liked to think about what things could be like. Just like you see these movies where people morph shapes, so you have aliens that can turn into a liquid and flow under a door. That kind of thing, I, I believe, is possible with the kinds of materials that we're working with. So the idea is you could imagine having this smart material in your living room and when your uncle calls you from, from the East Coast, the telephone takes the information about your uncle through some kind of projection system, sends that information over the line and then actuates this blob of material in front of you to look just like your uncle and you can touch that person and that person will feel the touch on the other end. Now there would be other applications, you can imagine making like aircraft wings that would deform as you're flying to fight turbulence. With such materials you could make wallpaper that suppresses sounds. These are very, very far out applications. I'm not making these things in my lab, but we're looking at the little fundamental building blocks of those kinds of materials so that eventually uh, we could actually make these things and have the technology. So what I'm talking about is not something that's five or ten years away, it's probably more like thirty years away. So I'd rather be doing work where one idea a hundred years from now can flower into all sorts of new new things as opposed to trying to improve something that exists today and make it a little bit better.